about a lot Jesus is then for me it's just I don't know where to put my mind at uh, any of the, these theories and you just you just accepted right at the beginning that the probabilities of there being God outweigh the probability of okay. So just let's go with the, the side which give, is, is, gives more weightage to the probability. So then I've explained to you very, very much so that if there is a creator, don't you think it makes sense that he wants us to lead a life according to what he commands for us? It makes perfect sense if we accept the first premise, then the second premise would be okay, what does he want from us? Why has he created us? For what purpose? And hence, it makes sense to the analogy I've given you of an instruction for life, how he wants us to lead one's life. That should be sufficient for you, where you are. Because you've accepted the probability of there being a creator, more so than there being not. So then, then it makes sense, if there is a divine being, he wants, it doesn't make sense at all that he would create us and simply say, get on with it and I'll see you in a few thousand years. No guidance, no understanding of how to live. We believe objective morality come solely and exclusively from God alone. He is the arbitrator on what is good and what is um, evil, what is acceptable, what is unacceptable. Hence, religion then plays a significant role in a person's life. Does that make, that, does that make sense at least? Yeah, I understand. So that. where are you still r reticent? I, I don't think it's a... I'm more than one conversation away from converting to any religion. I, I, I don't know anything. Well, I know the bare basics about Islam. I know the bare basics about Christianity. I've been in Jesus my whole life. I, I don't know. I've got friends who are both Christian. And both I, I just... Okay, let's, let me tell you something about Christianity. First of all, they believe that a man can be God. God can be like his creation. We reject that concept. We believe God is unlike his creation. So he's not a man, he's not a woman, he's not an idol, he's not a statue. And in itself, Islam is unique to all the other world's religions. Christianity, Hinduism, they all are essentially religions which espouse man being God. Or a spiritual connection which then invokes man to a level that he's not capable of being. In our understanding, man is a creation of God. God has given him faculties, reasoning, understanding and one must lead one's life according to God's will. However, just to reiterate the point, this singular being who's come from the metaphysical realm which we cannot comprehend, as me and you speak, if I stretch out my hand to you, what have we got in between us? We've got space, time, matter, energy. The very, the very uh, concept of what resulted as a result of the Big Bang. But what metaphysical entity was before that would be our creator. So it's not befitting that we give an analogy to creation to the creator. The Bible, so it gives Christ, Jesus, the exclusiveness which should belong to God alone. That God is, we believe God is the only true God, which is essentially what the Bible teaches. But Christians misunderstand the verses within their Bible. Are you following what I'm saying to you? They later made Jesus God centuries after he left 2,000 years ago. Are you following what I'm saying to you? And all the other world religions also espouse this. That, that for example, the Hindus, they believe their, their de deities, Ram, Vishnu, Ganesh, they were individuals who came to the earth, but they were later personified as being divine beings, when they themselves made no such claim. Does that make sense? So what is it about Islam which is different, just so that you, you followed? Uh, no, it's just, I, I don't know much about it. Yeah, um... I've heard things that, I mean, I'm unsure if they're whether they're true or not, but... It, tell, me, tell me what you've heard. Um, so, like, acceptance, like, so, I, I'm from, like, gay friends, for example. Yes. And uh, I've heard that it's, it's bad to act upon it, but you can be in the mind gay, but acting yes. upon it is where you draw the line. Yes. Um, that's what I've heard from my friends. Which is correct. Just, okay, yeah, so, I just, I can't get behind not, like, my friend's decisions, you know, and being, having that decision of being I just don't think it'd be, that's not the pure reason, that's not the solo reason for it. So like I said, I don't, I don't know anything. I haven't read the Quran ever, read the Bible ever, but no religious text of that book. So I'm going to give you a copy of the Quran for free after I, we finish I, I, speaking. I already have one, actually. My, my friend gave me one. So okay. I haven't started reading it yet. So I just, I don't know enough yet to be able to put my mind somewhere. Okay, let's down. address this gay issue, which is obviously on your head. Yeah. So, as your friend correctly told you, and the feelings, the inclination one has, there, then, as he made mention, it, there's a line drawn in terms of the physicality. Yeah. Okay. Now, 
in reference to that, we, we believe that objective morality is only with God alone. He decides what is acceptable or, or, or unacceptable. Yeah. So if a people have that inclination, they will feel curtailed by what they would deem as religious people who are imposing this view that we cannot then invoke our uh, our sexual sexuality upon others whom we are attracted to. But what we say, if this state, for example, hypothetically, every one of us was to have that volition and, and that enacting, and we, we are become people who are attracted to the same sex, how would this, how would mankind continue? Uh, that's, 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 that's a fair argument, but uh, the problem is it's not everyone, it's a minority of people. In fact, people overestimate the amount like the average person is a straight person. There's a very small percentage of LGBT people out in the world. So I don't think it's a problem of every, if everyone becomes gay, because that's just that's hypothetical that we shouldn't create in our heads to get like to this value uh, argument about acceptance. Okay, so on, on, on to that, I can make several responses. However, I want you to consider something which you essentially cut to the chase. Yeah. And that is this. What are your views? Think about this very carefully before you answer. Yeah. What are your views? On incest. That's fine. My, my friend, the same question about morality. Okay. But um, no, incest. Well, it's think about it very clearly for be able to give you a, a several, a several fold answer to this. Go well, on. I let you speak. Go on. I don't, I don't indulge in incest. I don't. I would never do it. It's just something beyond my morality. I don't think. I think it's disgusting to do. Have sex with your family. It's just something that. I without ever thinking about and okay. I hope to continue that way as well. Okay, now listen now, listen carefully to this. Yeah. In, in this country, in 1968, they repealed the Homosexual Act. Yeah. Before that, it was illegal and deemed as evil to elicit in such indulgences. Based upon what? What's your name, sorry? Theo. Theo Mais Mustafa, nice to meet nice you. To meet. Theo, listen to this carefully. So, it was deemed as unacceptable. Based upon what principle? On the principle as you've just mentioned. But the point being, that was the same analogy that homosexuals had as well. The issue here is what is the issue with two consenting adults? So whether they're two homosexuals or two incestual people. Is incest illegal? Yes, it is okay, currently. Yeah. But what I'm saying to you, this one which is just bear this in mind. Yeah. So the so the so the LGBTQ argument would be essentially if two consenting adults get up to the privacy of their physicality, what is it to do with the, any other individual? So, so with the incestual point, it's exactly the same. If a brother and sister, who just say reached the age of 18, right. and they decide they're not harming anyone, because the analogy is exactly the same. Well, that's the thing, like free will, you can do whatever you want. Because you have control of your own body, you can do whatever you want. But that's beyond me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't look out for people who have incest. I just keep my own bubble. Okay, I, but I don't, notice what you said here. You said it's disgusting. Oh yeah, I, I, I was disgusting to me. But right. that doesn't mean it's so it's homosexuality disgusting to you. Okay, now let's just address the point again. You see, look, you hone in on what I'm trying to say. This is about like what, what we're trying to say essentially is that the the argument that LGBT people derive is essentially that if we as consenting adults who are not harming anyone, it's none one's business what we get up to in terms of our sexuality. So the same analogy can be, be given to people who may uh, um, be, become of an um, adult age who would then invoke a, 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 a lust for each other based upon the fact they love each other if, if they are a consenting brother and sister. The analogy is exactly the same. Do you, you understand? The fact is that one can do so because one is not harming any other. That's the argument of the, of the LGBT so it's, 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 not, it's not my problem though. If, if, if two people are brother and sister and they want to do stuff, I, I don't think it's something I wouldn't do, and I think it's weird in my head. But to them, who knows? You know, who knows what's going for someone else? Yeah, head. I think we, we just seem to be repeating ourselves again this year. Yes. <laughs> so what I'm saying to you, essentially speaking, think about that. You see, so what we say is that God has a morality. There's a morality in which we do not go beyond. Okay. So if we're not there, is a there are there are um, studies which show there are individuals who have issues in regards to burning things. It's like an intrinsic mental condition where the light matches and burn things. Are you, are you aware of this? The, uh, pro, pro, it sounds very odd, but that is the case. So this is like an endemically within there, intrinsically within them. But we know, for example, that would be unacceptable. So you refrain from that action. So the feelings, which is uncontrollable, yes? 
For example, I may, I may find a particular lady very attractive, okay? And for me then, to then enact myself upon her would be unacceptable. You understand? So, yeah, so that would be... So what we're basically saying, there has to be a level where what we derive and is considered from our Creator who is the only source of objective morality. He decides as to what is considered. And even the ethics of philosophers such as Kant and Plato, they argue the same thing as well, we're essentially speaking as well. But there also needs to be a human curtailment in many aspects of things as well. Otherwise, we will go, we, our, our civilization would not really go forward in the manner that it's supposed to do so. So we've got to be very careful. So promiscuity, look, for example, sexually transmitted diseases amongst LGBTQ, although they're in a minority, as you said, but it's far higher than in the general heterosexual community. Are you aware of this? I can rack I, 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 don't, I don't look at the statistics on STDs. Oh, yeah. uh, STDs, the, all types of different... That's not something I... Well, I can assure you, you'd be amazed that the level of sexually transmitted diseases amongst people of the same sex which you said on a minority, is far higher than the majority heterosexual. Okay, well, far, far higher. Uh, uh, the thing is, I don't understand how that both like, affects me at all. In any right, way. but what it does show to you, there's a harm to society in, in that sense, you see. There's a harm you're going to invoke upon society and upon the other individual concerned who's then uh, going to... If you may harm society, how's it going to harm me as an individual? If, I don't, if I'm, a, I'm a straight guy, how, 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 how's that going to affect me? I'm not going around any guys doing any of this stuff. Yeah, so it won't affect you personally, but if it becomes endemic in our society, then we want, for example, okay, it's only a matter of time before you see, in schools, young children will be picked up by two mothers. Oh, where's your dad? I don't have a dad, I've only got two mums. Why is that a problem? That would be problematic because in all studies, again, I mean, you, don't want to, you said you don't want to go down the path of analyzing statistics. No, we, we can, we can, yes. Okay, sure. But in general studies, and I can quote those studies to you, and I'll bring the references up, it's understood that in the psyche of the um, of the child, it's always been understood through history that the par two parents, the mother and father, have been incumbent upon the psychological state of the child through history. Yeah. So the father would act like a the, the strong yeah. influence in the household. The mother would be the tender, I, caring. I have, I have a mother and a father. I, I know how a traditional family is brought up. I, yeah, I know the ins and outs. Yeah, yeah, of parental course. Parentalhood, how the father takes the more masculine role. Yes. Does the more uh, labour work job, like jobs, and the mother does the more nurturing, looking after. I, I grew up in a, sure. in a loving household. I know about all of that, but I mean, I won't be able to speak from experience because I've never had two mothers, two fathers. But I don't see more like that would have any change in the child's like not bringing at all but, but yeah because again the, the, the upbringing essentially would be characterizing if you've got two mothers just if they're, the, they're the, both the same nature exactly the same nature I mean, it may be very very soft where would the child where would the child get the discipline today? you know there's a massive attempt in society in can, general this can also applies to male and female uh parents some dads are just like, they don't want to be strict, they want to be laid back, they don't want to have to address discipline. That's so, the issue you see, and the thing is, ours is... It's not a, it's not a subjective no, type of fault in parenting, it's not between two women or two men, it's, this is a thing that's yeah, but what happened I'm, for hundreds of, like, thousands of years. Yeah, but what I'm saying to you, you see... Male and female. For example, today's society, let's just observe, the overwhelming attempt to demean the man, to lower the man. You understand? That, for example, if a, if a woman divorces her husband, and just say you've got three kids, they're all under the age of 15, just say they're 8, 10 and 12. In the event of a divorce taking place, the family courts also automatically make the assumption that the woman should care for the children. Automatically. Just say both husband and, uh, and, and wife work. Based on social structures, though. Not necessarily. Just say, for example, both. this is the analogy I'm about to give to you. Just say both both of them work. Both the husband works and the, they do the equal amount of hours, get roughly the equal amount of pay. Just say they drift apart then as a result. They've got three children. In the event of divorce taking place, family law statistics show that 95% of cases, women get the children. Where, look, I'll repeat that once more as the analogy. Both, part, both parents are working. Both are doing equal hours. Both share co-responsibility looking after their children. When it comes to the matter of divorce taking place, the woman will get the child, the, the, the lady will get the, the children. Hence what would happen then. If the divorce is acrimonious, 
she will be in the position of power where doting fathers cannot see their children. Yeah, it's I, become I, a massive problem no, in this I country. That's a, that is a big problem. In fact, my parents left when I was a young age, so I, I know what it's like to have both sides, you know, I've been on both sides of this not conflict. I don't want to, I don't want to victimize myself here, but uh, I've been on both sides of it, so I know what it's like. It's I, terrible. I, I see, I've seen it firsthand. But, but when you empower one, which is in, in today's society, the female over the other, then the man, for example, these organisations such as Family Needs Fathers, Fathers for Justice, craving, that, yeah. yeah, craving to see their children, which they can't, because they've empowered the women to such an extent that the man now becomes redundant. He has to follow the woman. So in divinely, in, in, in divinely revealed scripture, whether that's the Bible or the Quran, where God has given certain authority to the man. That doesn't mean he misuses the authority, which unfortunately does take place. But however, that's where the law comes in to rectify abuse. However, just note my very succinct point, Theo. Look at the discrimination against men in the sense that a divorce takes place, which you've experienced. You've got three children, all under the age of 15, 8, 10, 12. I'm giving an analogy of both uh, parents working same hours, same co-responsibility looking after their children. What happens as a result? The woman will get the children because the family courts would automatically assume that the woman is the natural carer. That's a new when, generalization though. Yes, because previously, in, up until 1989, there was an act called the Children's Act, section 2.B, which stated the natural guardian of the family is the father. They repealed that act then. Okay, the natural guardian of the family is the father. I think parental hood is, it should be two people. I don't, I don't think, I think one parent, having one parent is, 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 no, is not beneficial for any child. Absolutely, I think, I think it's a, it's a two, and I say this metaphor, two-man job. Like, I'm not saying... Yeah, yeah, no, just saying metaphorically, of course. It's yeah, a two-man job. But, yeah, so what I'm, you made some excellent points as well, but what I'm trying to say is there needs to be a construct you know, we're lamenting our societies. Right. Women are now going out to work. What's happening as a result? Massive increases in divorce. Did you know, did you know I think that the statistics say that six and a half marriages out of ten, they fold within the first few years. Why? Because of uncertain gender roles. Both uh, parents, go, both of them go out to work. It's, it's actually, I, oh, that was a point. That's fine. Um, I, 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 I did this, I did this, uh, uh, this task at school a few years back, it was talking, it was for my French class, and it was talking about how, uh, you know, uh, there are more divorces now than there were 100 years ago, but it's because women are becoming more empowering, and they're being able to take the man's role in like a 9 to 5, and I don't see how that's a negative thing in the world, because it's the quality within gender norms and society. But you've just seen the uh, what the result of that is. But that's, that's, that's extremism. That's, that's, you can't go for every... That doesn't apply. It's not applicable in every single case. That's like... But it's applicable radical. in the majority of cases based upon the statistics which show that marriages which take place now six and, six and a half out of ten fold within the first few years. Why is that? Why think about this carefully? I, I, no, I, I it's a result of un, un, untended gender roles and it's also because they they have well now this they don't need to rely on a man to be able to provide for them anymore. it's but it's more than that now it's o empowering them over and beyond what would be that's, deemed as reasonable so rights that's, for that's, them that's, that's extreme feminism i, I know but they've is, infiltrated but society yes but it's, it's a very small percentage I'm but they've saying, info look at the but you're saying it's very small right. i would hasten to say to you it's more uh, what you call intrinsic in terms of a, a methodology in which this is being applied. It's not for no reason, because we've got some beliefs in terms of end time scenarios before you know, uh, the advent of um, 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 you know, certain events which are to occur in the future, which, will, which is where, where our societies are inextricably heading towards. Essentially, essentially speaking, the role, everything is changing upside down. LGBTQ, atheism, feminism, all entities which are contrary to the laws pertaining to in Abrahamic religions, for example. Are you following me? So, so even, in the, even in the Bible, for example, it says that the head of a woman is man, the head of man is Christ, the head of Christ is God. In the Quran, there's a similar verse which says that the believing women who are devout, who are devout to Allah, to God, and by proxy to their husbands as well. The powers that be want to turn that upside down and empower the women to such an extent that the men become subservient to them. And what do they do then? They show, they show in esoteric manners 
how they are in positions of power. So they would show you to in serialization of films, for example, where a woman sits on her throne, Game of Thrones. He sits on the throne and says, whoever stands in our way, we will defeat him. There is another, this is a very good point. This out. Notice what I just said, my last comment. Whoever stands in our way, we will defeat them. She's sitting on the throne. There's a program coming out on Sky. It's called Citadel. Citadel. C-I-T-A-D-E-L. Incredibly, they use the same um, words which I've used today in regards to the event in Game of Thrones. Same thing is being said as, the, as well. If you get in our way, we will defeat you. Meaning we will. We are going to be the ones who will be in power. We, so the gender, everything's going that's, to be changed around. But you see, that, this is what I'm saying. That's, firstly, that's fiction. It's, it's not real. So there's no point in getting the fictional stories because it, it doesn't... A very tiny percent of people watch those even. And how does it change society? Maybe it gives women more confidence, more in power. They're, they're more in power themselves. Maybe. Not into, no, this is the, again, uh, they're not empowered themselves, they're in power of the whole structure now. Well, as a, as a queen, yes, uh, like in Game of Thrones, yes. uh, I forget her name, but... Um, uh, is it Helen Mirren or someone? I can't remember exact name. Neither do I, but... Um, I think it may have been her, but anyway, someone like there, that. There have been queens in history for thousands, thousands of years, like this isn't a thing that's all of a sudden now that there's media and television and people have... Uh, forgot about like the gender norms. Yeah, but even if we have had queens, like just say Cleopatra or whatever, okay, what would happen in that case, they would be still subject that they would be the head of, head of the state. However, it would still be the normality of the structure of society, which has been um, prevalent throughout history, where men have had that position in the household and women have had their position. So that never changed. Even if you had a, 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 even if you had a matriarchal, matriarchal Sorry, uh, a matriarchal leadership, but like the example I've given you. However, notice something here. This is what we believe. We believe with the conjunction of entities, which, for example, God has given authority to man in, in these relationships. That doesn't mean it's misused, number one. Number two, things such as, you know, LGBTQ and such and such, which is now being invoked upon us. Young children have to learn about same-sex education at school. The intricate details of what that invokes. And then the propelling of atheism. These are three entities which have come together simultaneously. Listen to me carefully, Theo. They've come together centrally together for the objective of basically speaking, whatever God has espoused, we are going to speak, we are going to do to the contrary. So they've unified as a group together, like an alliance, a pact together to go against the established norms. Whatever has been, yeah, what, whatever has been universally deemed as moral, we are going to change upside down. And these are the people who are now in positions of authority. Atheism, massively in the in increase, rejection of God, mocking of God, then LGBTQ, feminism and atheism. These three entities which are contrary to what God has revealed. Feminism, although you dispel it as minimalistic, however, the point is that they are now in positions of dominance and power. And I've got my own understanding how that envelops. But I, I, well, I don't understand this, like, why that has so the fact that uh, <laughs> feminism, the rise of feminism, has led to the empowering of women. I, I don't understand how that's... Because we've just, we've, just like, we've, just, because, we've just discussed that. Because in the history, the men are usually the head of the house. So yeah. why is the problem nowadays that women are being able to take their own charge? But what, what we're saying though here is that it's not a matter of fact them having... It's not the... It's changed it's change really such a bad thing. I'll explain to you why. I've just given you the reasoning why. Just look, look, look at what I've said to you, Theo. Think carefully about this. The very first example I gave to you. In the event of a divorce taking place, the women, are just, the women are in authority, so they will get the children. What will happen in the event of a divorce? Listen carefully. The assets will be divided. But because she has the children, she will get, it by rough um, estimates, 95 percent of the estate. So the assets will go to her. Yes, are you listening carefully? So the assets will go to her, so the man then is left with, if he's fortunate enough, to get visitation rights to see these children once or twice a month, if he's lucky. If he's not lucky, if there's been any incident in regards to um, a, 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 a domestic incidents, then they would always, the police would always favour the women. Based upon, there used to be a, a, a from the pretty Patel, the, 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 the uh, home secretary, down to Chrisida Dick the head of the Metropolitan Police, right through to the social workers, up until the judiciary. They've infiltrated the whole system in place 
so that the women are empowered. They can do what they, so they can then suffocate the men. Listen to me carefully, let me hear me out. Then you can retort to me. So the system being now in, 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 ingrained is such that they are going to be dominant. So for example, if a, if a father is fortunate enough to see his children once a month, yeah. that's a blessing. Just say a court gives an order that the, that the father can see his ch children once a month or twice a month and the court is given the order. If the woman, for example, on, on the day that he's due to visit his children and he knocks on the door, there's a saying, sorry, children unwell, come next time. And then the father goes back complaining to the court, oh, my wife is not, my ex is not letting me see my children. And the court will say, okay, we'll speak to her. But they will not enforce it. They will send the police round, knocking on the door, madam, we've got a court order here, which states that the child can see them. But no, they don't, they don't enforce it. Are you following what I'm saying to you? Sure. So what happens then, the women then become bolstered. They think, you know what, and when, it, when divorces become acrimonious, they know they can stuff the man in every... So the man becomes, having lost everything, they're not seeing his children, he becomes like a beggar to them. Right. Does that make sense? This is what is happening I mean, today. I can understand it, but I can't... I Reason, can't with it. You know when the men, for example, when they went into central London, dressed as super, superhuman, in superhuman kits like uh, Spider-Man or Superman, standing on top of buildings, why do you think they go to that extent for? But later they're deemed as extremists by the media in general. But because they are so desperate, because the system is so much against them, at every single juncture, they're propelling the women and trying to stuff the man. And hence what happens, they, because they, they don't have their in rights invoked, everywhere there is some sort of blockage to them due to these powers that be who are deliberately trying to crush the man. Are you following what I'm saying I to you, Theo? And this is why these organised, this is why fam fathers can't see their children. And des imagine the desperation on their faces. So many cases of men, you know, committing suicide, which is exactly what they want. There are organisations today, women's organisations, not organ on YouTube and on social media, openly declaring, let's kill men. Yeah, are you aware of that here? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Are you aware? But no, no action is ever taken against them. No, because they're, they're done for it. So you shouldn't... I mean, I, I understand what you're saying about divorces and about how the parent, like the father figure in the uh, household is like uh, looked down upon in that other man, is what you're saying. Yes. Um, but the kill or men thing, that's something I've grown up with, like hearing people say kill or men, because I'm, I'm only 18, so I'm, I'm like pretty new, and uh, people have been saying kill or men for since I got internet access, but I've never seen a real person say in face, kill a man. People say this are currently online and they don't leave their house. They're not, they're, they're not functioning members of society. They're not, they're not real. Like, Theo, these are people, these are organ women's organizations. Are extreme, these are not. Yeah, they're but what? Very Listen to my point. So you, I, I, I see you seem to be downplaying it. What I'm trying to tell you, Theo, but Theo, listen to what you listen to what you just said. You've essentially said these are just some sort of individuals who are totally uh, alien to society, who have got no real grasp of things. I'm telling you, these are organisations which are propelling these types of um, ludicrous types of statements. Imagine, for example, the far right. If they're, if they're going to say, okay, we've got to come to London and we've got to sort out London because it's too cosmopolitan, immediately the service will be onto them. The authorities will be onto them. But when it comes to women making such statements, oh, it doesn't matter, they're only saying it in jest. It's because you know what you know what they're actually saying? They're actually saying we've got so much power over you now that we can even make all these types of inflammatory statements and nothing can be done because no. we're in positions of authority. I, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not defending kill women. I think that's a, it's a joke saying and I think it's a joke of a like but imagine that, imagine imagine well. imagine you get people who then would enact that. But because, because I've never met one. I, I mean, I'll take your word for it, but I, I can't, I've never Trust met me. someone who said kill men without either joking or without because, having not shouting. Okay, but no one's going to say, woohoo, let's go and come up to Theo, okay, let's go and kill all men. I mean, no one's going to but the organisations which you've already accepted are already there. But what, what action has been taken against them? Nothing. Zilch. So the point being, is this is just a little indicator for you. Now, I'm not standing here to say, listen, men have not been the... Um, the um, protagonists from domestic violence. Certainly, women have had very tough time. I'm not disputing that for one second. However, the rights which Islam brings gives them, for example, when the Prophet Muhammad upon whom he came to the Arab pagan communities, they were burying their daughters alive. I repeat that again, Theo. They were burying their daughters alive. So he stood up to them. 
he stood up to them despite the fact that you know he was closely affiliated to them as being family members but he then became their number one enemy to which he then fought against them so islam gave women tremendous rights and did you know in this country out of every four individuals three who convert are women three out of four who are converting to islam are women despite the fact that it's deemed as a women as a religion which is oppressive to men i can show you you know when you finish today you're going to check out a station called sam dawa which is where this is being recorded okay sam dawa if you want to face it out it's on youtube Got, it's got hundreds of thousands of subscribers as well. Okay, I'm on there. Free, I'm on there as a free one. Sam Dawa, S A M, yeah. and the second word is D A W A H. Okay. So I'm speaking to lots of people on the Eastern European ladies in particularly. So much captivated by the religion. Yesterday I was in Central London. A Dutch youngster became Muslim, like your age, roughly, became Muslim. It's, it's, it's definitely something I've thought about a lot, well, but I just I need to know the path where to like, I, know, I need to know the right path is why. Where, can, can I ask which part of the uh, where, where uh, you live? I live in Plaza. Plaza, okay, so you've got lots of Muslims around you. Yeah, and even, my friend group is Muslim. Fantastic. And I've got a friend, I've got a brother there who's actually from Pasto as well. If you want to link up with him, share numbers, he can be as a source of help for you. And he's active in this field, if you want to. No, I, I, I've already got, You've already got lots of Muslim friends. I've got a great community of Muslim like brothers who like, teach me and guide me on okay, uh, Islam. So I, I, I'll be fine for getting you contacts, but I've already got my, my friends who are... Super. Well, the only reason why I suggested that is because he lives in Pasto and he's very active in this field. You know what? And he's married to a revert Eastern European lady. <laughs> Which, if you watch these videos, it'll be amazing. But anyway, point, my friend, is listen carefully to what Islam is a natural way inclination towards our Creator. We are going to return to that Creator. We're going to be accountable for our actions. That's it. That's its fundament, and we lead a life according to that Creator's will. In today's society, where we can do anything we want, the last thing we want to do is perhaps speak about something which would be deemed as, oh, backward controversial. Or, or controversial. No, I think freedom of speech is very important and you should be able to have your, like, anyone have their opinion. Yes, and, but it should also be curtailed to the extent that you do not then humiliate someone off of yeah. Humiliation is totally unacceptable. Yeah, or saying you. such inflammatory remarks which will go over and beyond. Do you understand? Yeah, I, I, so I that agree. is where the, where the line must be drawn. And the authorities know that and they have to do something about it. Yeah. Anyway, it's been a delight speaking to you. You've got the Quran, please consider yes. some of the things that I've said and um, you know we can have further discussions. We're here regularly two to seven on Saturday.